How much time do you spend sitting down? Do you worry that it's too much? Do you know how much is too much? And do you worry that your sedentary job might be harming you? Well, in this video, I'm going to try and answer those questions using the most current research. And hopefully, you might learn something that could potentially make a huge difference to your health and well-being. I'm Stephen Bunting. I'm an MSK physiotherapist, and this is Physio MSK. Welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to explore the following questions. How much is too much sitting? What are the risks of sitting for too long? And what changes can you make to reduce these risks? So the basic paradox we have with this issue is that humans just aren't designed to sit. Our skeleton and muscles have evolved to be efficient in standing and walking. There is nothing in our body plan adapted to the sitting position. But we live in a world which revolves around convenience, comfort and ease. The modern workplace and its use of technology might have improved many aspects of our lives, but at the expense of movement and activity, and ultimately our health. Modern jobs are all about productivity and convenience, but unfortunately this often means being sat or otherwise inactive for much longer than is good for us. So how long does the average person spend in sitting? Well, there have been lots of studies looking at this and it works out that the average adult spends about eight hours a day in sitting, so about half of their waking hours. Office workers spend on average between 10 and 12 hours per day in sitting, which works out between two thirds and three quarters of their waking hours. And these times have been steadily increasing over the past decade. So what do we know about the effects of prolonged sitting on our health? Well, quite a lot actually, as this has been an active area of research over the last 20 years. So we know that prolonged sitting can cause a number of negative effects on the body. And these effects can cascade and interact and ultimately cause more serious health problems. For instance, being sat will slow down your blood flow and reduce your energy use. Therefore, your blood sugars and fats will tend to rise because the energy demand from your cells has dropped. As a result, your insulin levels will also rise and this increases your blood pressure. Also, we know that general lack of movement and exercise can cause muscle weakness and reduce bone density. And there is increasing evidence that prolonged inactivity can also cause mental health problems such as anxiety and depression. And persistently high blood sugars and insulin, along with higher blood pressure, is the recipe for type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease, which can ultimately lead to stroke, heart attacks and early death. Indeed, a study in 2019 showed some really interesting but sobering stats, which I think highlights the true magnitude of this problem. This was a meta-analysis, which is considered to be the highest level of research as it summarises the findings of many high quality studies looking at the same topic. And in this case, the authors found that the risk of dying early was directly related to the amount of daily sitting. Taking seven and a half hours per day as a benchmark amount, the authors found that half an hour more of daily sitting increased the early death risk by just 4%. But an increase to nine hours per day increased this risk by 15% and above nine hours, the early death risks ramped up dramatically. At 10 hours per day, the risk increased by 48%, and at 12 hours, the early death risk was 192% above that seven and a half hour benchmark level. Food for thought. The person who pioneered this area of research was a British doctor called Jerry Morris, who did a large survey in the 1950s looking at heart disease in bus drivers compared to bus conductors. Now many of you won't be old enough to remember bus conductors but at that time they were on every bus and their job was to collect the bus fares and issue the tickets. And the key point is that they were on their feet for the majority of the day compared to the bus drivers who were sat for most of their day. 
and surprise, surprise, Dr. Morris found that the bus drivers had much higher rates of heart disease than the bus conductors. And in a way, this single piece of research captures the problem of modern life in a nutshell. Bus conductors were eventually deemed unnecessary. The driver could take over that job. Money was saved and one person then did the job that two people used to do. But the driver continued to sit all day. And this type of modernisation was then repeated throughout many different professions over the following decades, resulting in our typical modern day worker who spends the majority of their day sat down. And even in the last 20 years, the activity levels of a typical office worker have steadily reduced even further due to advances in technology. Those regular trips to the fax machine and photocopier just don't happen anymore because these things are now just icons on the desktop. Same thing with email, Zoom calls and video conferencing, all designed to keep us at our desks for longer. And for today's average office worker, this is currently around 10 hours per day in sitting. Drivers are the worst profession for prolonged sitting, with bus drivers averaging about 11 hours and lorry drivers upwards of 12 hours per day sat down. And if you think about it, much of our social structure is also centred around the seated position. You go to an appointment and it's, come on in Mrs Jones, have a seat, sit down Mr Smith, make yourself comfortable. It would almost seem strange to reply, thanks, but if it's okay, I'll stand. We go to a meeting, everyone sits down. We sit down to eat, we sit down to read, we sit down to watch TV. And ironically, we even watch our favourite sports teams in sitting. And if we continue to follow this trend to its logical conclusion, then, well, if you've seen the film Wally, -E, then you know what I mean. So enough of this doom and gloom, let's talk about the things we can do to help reverse this trend. And the good news is there is plenty of things and most can be easily incorporated into your normal day. But to set the scene, let's briefly talk about energy use. So in sitting, as we've already established, you use very little energy. But what happens if we start doing just some simple things? Well, if we stand up, then immediately we start using 20% more energy than in sitting, and that's just standing still. If we start walking, then this increases to 90%. And if we do some very basic body weight exercises, such as heel raises, knee raises, or mini squats, then this increases our energy to over 100% of the level seen in sitting. So that's really good news. We can significantly increase our energy use by doing really simple things. So how do we go about doing this? Well, there are some options. We could continue exactly how we are at work, but then when we get home, we do around 60 to 70 minutes of moderate to vigorous activity. This could be a brisk walk, a standing sports game, a cycle ride or a gym session, but you'd have to do this every day. So that's one option. The other option is to try and increase your activity levels while you are at work, by incorporating a few simple changes into your working day. So let's use an office worker as a typical example here. And if you can get up every 30 minutes or so and spend a minute or two walking or doing those simple exercises we mentioned before, then you're gonna be making a huge difference to your daily energy use and ultimately improving your health. The other thing that can really help is to use a riser desk. These desks can move easily between a sitting height and a standing height and they are perhaps the single most helpful piece of equipment that you could use to improve your health in the office. Thankfully they are becoming more commonplace in offices and hopefully one day they will become the norm. And if you've seen people using riser desks it's really striking just how active they can be compared to someone sat at a desk. People who stand at a desk will rarely be still, they will be shifting their weight from side to side moving around the desk and generally looking much more alert and active than their seated counterparts. And we now know that compared to sitting, standing will increase energy levels, burn calories, reduce blood sugars, lower body weight and blood pressure and ultimately reduce the risk of type 2 diabetes and heart disease. 
but also there is good evidence to suggest that standing more can improve mental and physical health and reduce the likelihood of developing many of the musculoskeletal problems plagued by office workers such as back and neck pain and muscle tension. A riser desk setup might cost one or two thousand dollars but that is insignificant compared to the cost of sickness absence through occupational health problems. So go and talk to your boss and if you are the boss then be proactive and make an investment into the health and ultimately the productivity of your workers. And it's funny because I hear all the time about office workers getting an ergonomic assessment and ultimately being given an expensive chair with lots of adjustments and gadgets to help nestle them into a really supportive sitting position, which then makes it even less likely that they're going to get up out of it and move around. Really, if you think about this logically, we should be using a chair with the minimum amount of support so that people are much more likely to get up out of it from time to time. So maybe the best office chair is something like this. I'm joking, of course, but it never ceases to amaze me how much companies will spend on fancy chairs when a riser desk would often be a much better investment for their worker. With driving jobs, it's a bit more difficult, but you can do certain exercises for both arms and legs while sat in traffic or when you've pulled over. But ultimately, if you can stop and get out to walk around and stretch from time to time, then that's going to be the best option for your health. Now, if you're interested in learning more about improving your work-life health, or if you're an employer and wanting to encourage your workforce to sit less and become more active, then the University of Leicester in the UK run a great free program which is full of resources to help you make this transition. And they have had some great results which you can see here. I'll put a link to their smart work program in the description below and I would strongly encourage people to check it out. And finally, if you want to know even more about this fascinating topic, then I can highly recommend Katie Bowman's book, which I will also put a link to in the description below. Well, that's about it. I do hope that you found something useful that can hopefully improve your health. Please do share the video with anybody you think might be interested and don't forget to like and subscribe as this really helps get the video in front of more people who might also benefit. So until the next video, thanks very much for watching and bye for now.